How's it going everybody, Ed Ricker here and thanks for stopping by. All the footage that you're watching right now is coming from the Insta360 ONE R Twin Edition. This is a new modular 360 action cam system which is actually pretty interesting. The capabilities are impressive and the workflow has been improved. And since this 360 action cam is also modular, it gives you some more shooting options than you had before. This is the Insta360 ONE R and it's got your 360 camera right here. So it's got your front and your back lenses as well as the LCD screen right there in the back. Of course, that could also be the front depending on how you mount it or the depending on how you hold it. Now this is the twin edition camera and it's also, as I mentioned earlier, modular, which means it comes with a 4K wide angle mod right there. So to modify this, you take off the battery, you take off the 360 mod, you're left with the core, which includes the LCD screen. And then you can take your 4K mod and you can put it either this way so that your LCD screen is facing toward the rear or say you want to do some vlogging or you know you want to be able to see what it's seeing while it's pointed your way you just flip around the LCD screen now you have a front facing LCD screen with your 4K mod and then your battery very cool concept now i think that they are probably sacrificing some structural integrity in order to have this modular capability but at the same time you basically have two different types of cameras or in some cases, three types of cameras. And if you use their included uh, Insta360 ONE R housing here, you put the camera in and it's not gonna explode in three different directions if it gets hit hard or something. Now with the 4K mod, it's pretty self-explanatory. It shoots 4K wide angle footage, but the 360 mod can shoot up to 5.7K video with 360 degrees field of view. And if you wanna keep it that way, you can definitely upload it to YouTube in 360 mode, and people can have an interactive experience kind of moving around uh, in the space of the video as the video plays, or you can use their Insta360 Studio software to reframe your shots or create a bunch of different effects or move the camera around in seemingly unnatural or impossible ways without a 360 camera. Now I do two main things outside my free time. I like to fly drones, I like to longboard. So between those two things, I thought, well, those are great activities to test out the Insta360 ONE R, especially the 360 mod. I'll mainly be showing footage from those two types of activities in this video. And even though the camera is packed with features, I'll mainly be focusing on the features that will work with those two activities. There is a software called Insta360 Studio that will help you in post-production to process some of this footage. So I mainly shot in 5.7K at 30 frames per second. When you record the footage on the camera, it looks kind of crazy until you process it. You have to let the uh, Insta360 Studio process the footage for you to then manipulate it. And manipulating it can be uh, picking different effects or panning it around, tilting the camera up and down. This is all can be done in post-production. So basically when you're flying or you're recording with this type of camera, you're just holding it out and, and letting it do its thing and recording. First of all, let's start with longboarding and I'll show you a couple different things I was able to do with this camera. Um, shooting in 5.7K at 30 frames per second for the majority of this stuff, I was able to get some really awesome footage just holding my camera out on a selfie stick. And by the way, a selfie stick is included with the purchase uh, if you make a purchase up until I think it's May 24th. The cool thing about a selfie stick with the Insta360 ONE R is the selfie stick disappears. They call it the invisible selfie stick. Part of the reason is with the algorithm that uh, Insta360 is able to use with the studio, it crops out just a little bit where your hand is with the selfie stick, which is directly underneath the camera. So the selfie stick is basically about as wide as the camera is. It's not gonna see that anyway. So when it stitches automatically the front and the rear footage together, Boom, selfie stick disappears. I was able to cruise around on my longboard, had a great old time, and it's cool that I can just pretty much hold the camera out and not really do much. You know, I'm trusting that it records in 360 so that when I get it onto the computer, I can manipulate my angles, I can manipulate how wide the footage is, whether it's fisheye or planet view or some of these other effects that you can uh, add in post-production. So 360 footage, there's a lot of post-production process to be done. I mean, it's automatically stitched together from the front to the back, but beyond that, if you wanna move things around, it's gonna be a big, uh, a big editing component to, to getting your footage looking the way it is. The beauty about that is you don't have to really move the camera much or frame up your shot 
when you're recording. So if I'm holding my camera out in front of me while I'm longboarding, I can focus on not falling, not crashing. And then when I get home, I'll have all the time in the world to manipulate the, the different angles and the different width and the different uh, effects that you can do with the Insta360 Studio software. This is even more true when you put this onto a drone. Uh, with an FPV drone, you're more likely to start flipping around and doing power loops and doing tricks. But really, if you just cruise around with this Insta360 uh, you know, one R on top of the, the quad and you're flying around, you can do all of your tricks and a lot of these different cool effects just fly in a straight line. One thing that I noticed about 360 cameras though is you get the best effect or the most impressive um, post-production uh, capabilities if you're flying around tall things or underneath things because then you can start to really manipulate your footage and, and pan things and it just looks so crazy, especially with some of those planet views or the fisheye. You can also use the camera to track objects within the frame. So say I'm flying with a friend who's also buzzing around me, I can use my framing of my quad and keep him in the shot. When in real life, I was just pretty much trying to just follow him and, and not crash. I was able to frame up in post-production and get things exactly the way I wanted to. All right, so here is the LCD screen. And you have different options. You know, you can select your different settings and that type of thing. You can select your frame rate and your resolution. But one really cool thing is you can scroll around with the LCD and look around the room with your 360 mod. You can also do this in playback. So if you want to review some footage and you shot it in 360, you can scroll around with the LCD screen and see exactly what you shot. Insta360 sent me a couple other uh, things. One is a drone bundle to attach to uh, Mavic Pro. It doesn't work with my Mavic 2 Pros. It's a different size and body style. It well, doesn't fit perfectly anyway. So um, this is uh, available, but it won't work with Mavic 2 Pro. And then we have our lens guards. Now I did use the lens guards quite a bit. Even though they added to the weight of the camera and also uh, require you to uh, select that lens guards are on in the Insta Studio software to make sure that you can uh, stitch those out. They just pop on the front and the back like so. They will help to save your camera from getting broken. So if I'm worried that I might end up falling or dropping that selfie stick when I'm longboarding or if I'm flying an FPV quad and I, I'm kind of concerned I might crash into something, a tree, a wall, whatever, putting those lens guards on the camera really helps uh, my confidence level. Plus, I hadn't made this video yet and I did all those different types of footage. I thought, hey, if I break this thing before I make a video, I'm gonna have to pay him for the camera probably. So, I also like the lens cover that's a dual lens cover, which means that when you put it on, the front and the back of the 360 mod is protected because how else are you gonna set this down, you know? You get this <laughs> on the front or on the back. So the Insta360 Studio software is something that you will have to get familiar with. What you do is you import your footage from the micro SD card in your camera, which does not come with the camera, by the way. Import it into the program, process it within the program, export it out of the program, and then import it into whatever, you know, editing program you use, like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut, iMovie, whatever. You just need to get it processed initially by the, the studio software, then you can edit in with the rest of your vlog or, or other types of footage you want to include it with. That is a bit time consuming. It's not immediate and some of the exporting time takes up to maybe five minutes for a longer clip, maybe even longer if you don't have a very fast computer. So it's not instantaneous and that's, that's one of the downfalls of 360 footage from a lot of different types of action cameras is the post-production time. If you don't want to include that type of footage, you want to make it easy on yourself, use your 4K mod and then it's just pretty much straightforward drag and drop into your, uh, you know, your editing software choice.
Now, whether you're using a GoPro or an Osmo Action, you'll, you'll recognize these mounting options. And I'm so thankful that most action cams have a standardized way of mounting onto the various mounts you might already own. So for instance, the way that I mounted my Insta360 onto my drone was I used this little sticky mount, which can be used on a helmet or on other surface. And so I uh, basically attached it just like that and then wrapped a battery strap around this as well and then you know strapped it to my quad just to make sure it wasn't gonna fling off if I did fall or crash, um, although I was really trying to fly nice and safe with this, and I never once crashed with this. I did fly it with the housing. I don't trust uh, this to be able to be flown without the housing uh, to keep this all as one piece, because otherwise, like I said earlier, this thing is going to be flying in three separate directions if you do crash. However, I did print a uh, little mount here for my Armiton Marmot for the 4K mod. That way I was able to fly without the housing and instead used my 3D printed uh, camera mount right here. Um, I found that on Thingiverse and I printed it with my Soval SVO1. And that was one of the things I realized with the 4K mod. They, they say it's wide angle. Um, I, I'm not sure what how like how wide they expected it to be when they say wide, but I don't really consider it very wide. I wished it was wider, especially when it's its own mod. You know, if it was just the Insta360 and it had its own little preset and said, oh, it's it's wide 4K, but it was using the same mod, then I understand. But to have a separate 4K mod and not be very wide was somewhat uh, disappointing. I would have liked to see a little bit more. I used it a few times, once longboarding and then once with FPV, and I really missed more of a super view feel of view. But I can see use for this if you want to be walking around, talking to camera, vlogging a little bit. This might be a better field of view for that. But for um, an action cam, it, it, it was disappointing. However, you got your 360 cam, which is the widest it can be. Like that's the widest camera ever. So maybe I'm just being a little too picky here. Also considering the camera does have multiple capabilities for the price, which is 480 bucks um, US dollars. So you get two cameras in one essentially. That's awesome. Another thing about the 4K mod, they didn't really give you a good way to store it. I mean, you have your old box, but if I'm gonna be taking this out to other places. This is just floating around in my bag. I mean, this can be nice, you know, this can, you can use your lens guard and everything or your, um, you know, your lens cover on this one and put this in your bag just like this. But this is just floating around, especially with the, the, the connections here. So I went on Thingiverse again and I 3D printed my own case. So this will keep the 4K mod safe if I, uh, you know, put it into a camera bag or a drone bag or something. Um, but it would have been cool if they included something like that in the box because there's no other way to keep this safe, you know? I did run into a few issues with the 360 cam. Um, first of all, you have to make sure your micro SD card is formatted properly. You can do that in camera or maybe on your computer, but if you've used your micro SD card with another camera and it's already kind of set up, it's already got the filing system, it may freeze this one up and that happened a few times. And I couldn't format it from the, the camera because the camera kept freezing. So I had to use a different micro SD card that I had laying around and then I could boot it up and then I could format that micro SD card. I like the housing of the camera because it has your record button as well as your power on off button. Um, it also has easy access to your micro SD card right there and you don't have to take the housing off or open it up in order to access the micro SD card. However, one thing that you have to be careful of is putting the camera in the housing properly. So you see your buttons right here on the housing. You see the buttons right here on the core of the camera. You could very easily put the camera in like this and then these buttons don't do anything. And you think, what, is my, my camera dead? It's not working? Well, it's because you had it backwards. Now, I really like using the lens guards because like I said earlier, they protect the camera, the, the lenses, you know, from scratches and, and from breaking but I do notice some lens flare that wasn't there before when I wasn't using the lens guards. There's no real way to get past that in editing. It's just kind of there in your footage if you're facing a certain way with some bright sun. Uh, taking away the lens guards seems to improve that a little bit, but again, you're sacrificing um, you know, safety of your camera potentially. With longboarding, I pretty much stuck to selfie stick, but I was moving the selfie stick around trying to get different shots. Um, I, was, I was hanging it down low to get a cool shot of my board. I did notice, however, 
when I was doing that down low, I was very close to my leg. And if you get close to your leg and you're also in that stitching zone, you know, between the front and the back uh, lenses, you know, when it stitches together on the side, it's going to create some crazy warping of the image, especially with things that are close to the camera. So my leg was very close to the camera. My leg looks crazy. If it was something further away, the stitching wouldn't be quite so obvious. So that stitching algorithm seems to affect objects closer to the camera on that edge. You can also kind of see that stitching in action when I'm flying my FPV quad and I, I point the camera down in post-production to show underneath the camera. The drone is about half the size, looks like it's cut in half. That's where that stitching was taking place. However, I was able to hang the camera down underneath the drone using a sticky mount that way. And because I was hanging a little further and didn't have that huge LiPo battery all up in the shot, that stitching was a little bit less prominent and it it kind of creates a cool effect underneath the drone as well. What I do like about the studio software is that you can create your own timeline and edit along an entire clip's length. So if you want to create keyframes, at the beginning you want it to be normal, but you want to be maybe panning around manually, you make keyframes and then at each new keyframe you're adjusting the angle. You can also select what kind of transition it would be between one keyframe to the next. Each keyframe can either be a different uh, camera rotation or tilt or pan, but it can also be a different effect, such as your fisheye or your planet or, you know, your other types of uh, presets that they have in the studio software. This camera also relies on flow state stabilization, and you can turn it on or off in the studio software, and you can really see how much that flow state stabilization is working to stabilize your footage. You won't be using this to capture great audio, but there is a micro or a um, USB-C port right there, which you can use with an adapter for an external mic. So a big selling point that they have is that you don't need to stitch the footage together. Uh, I guess with other action cams, I've never used one, but what I've heard, other action cams, you have to do that as one of the, the, the processes to, from start to finish, get your footage to be viewable. So you do not need to stitch the front and the back cameras together. They're not two separate files. However, they might end up being two separate files on your computer because they're just huge. 5.7K uh, gets, gets to be a big file after a while, so it automatically splits them up. So two files may be actually the beginning and the end of a five or six minute recording. And then in the Insta Studio software, it knows that and it will become one file on the timeline you can process and export out. Now the red battery on this thing lasts about an hour of recording time. Um, I felt like I got a little more than that, but regardless, you can get a boosted style battery, which is twice the size, twice the milliamps. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Insta360 for sending me the 1R Twin Edition. Um, I like the camera. It's got its downfalls, but every camera does. Uh, I think for the price, though, 480 bucks, uh, considering you get a second camera, essentially, with this 4K wide-angle mod, um, is not a bad price. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, maybe a larger battery or an extra battery thrown in or maybe a SD card thrown in just to give it a little bit more value. But all things considered, especially because you're getting the selfie stick free with it, it's a good value ultimately. Um, so check the link in the video description down below to check this uh, camera out. Also, if you have any questions, comment below. I'm not an Insta360 uh, master. I don't know everything about their cameras, but maybe Insta360 will lurk around in the comments and answer some, so we can only hope. Take care, everybody. Stay healthy.